Hey there, my name is Kelly Dale and this is your Must Know Monday for Monday, February the 1st. Happy February, guys. I hope your month is starting off wonderfully. One of the things that I love about having a physical store is the fact that when customers come in, you know, we get asked a lot of questions. Um, you know, some are, um, you know, like stitching questions, wire questions, but my favorite questions are, what do I do with these? And that's kind of the whole purpose of these Must Know Monday videos, is to teach you things that you really need to know as a beater, and also to teach you how to use certain findings that you probably have no idea what to do with. So, a customer was asking me the other day, they found a finding, an earring finding, um, and they're just these basic little drops like this that have an open hole. These are a 47 by 11 millimeter, so they're a nice size for an earring. They can also be used as a pendant. But she said, it's pretty, but what do you do with it? So I designed a pair of earrings, a very basic and simple pair of earrings that I want to show you today using some gr um, gradient colors. Um, I'm going to show you um, the pink pair that I've came up with, but then I'll show you a sample of a blue pair that I've made too. These earrings are super, super simple, and they are a great product um, that you can sell, like at your craft fairs that are coming up for the spring and the summer. Um, they're pretty inexpensive because um, all you need is two of these little bindings, which we sell on our website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. You need two three-inch head pins, one pair of ear hooks, whatever kind you like. I'm using six two-millimeter silver round balls, and then I'm using two um, fuchsia bicones, two rose bicones, two vintage rose bicones, and two crystal AB bicones. So let me show you these great findings and how to use them. All right, so this is the earring that I have created for you today um, to show you how to use these findings. This is a very simple earring. This is my blue pair. It uses Montana sapphire, aquamarine, and a crystal AB. So they're really just simple. You can do however many, um, I think you can probably fit one more four millimeter um, here inside of it, um, but they're just a really simple and easy project. So I'm gonna do the pink pair for you today. And again, I'm using the um, three inch head pins. And you wanna take your head pin and thread on um, a fuchsia, a two millimeter round, a rose, two millimeter round, a vintage rose, a two millimeter round, and a crystal AB. So it's a gradient in how the color scheme goes. The next thing you want to do is actually take the head pin, lay it inside of the finding to see exactly where you want that to lay. And I want it to kind of lay a little low like this. So I'm gonna hold it in place, see where the hole is here at top, and then using my round nose pliers, I'm gonna grab, so the hole is right here, and when I look at it to the side, this is the base of the hole. So I'm gonna grab right below on that head pin, I'm grabbing right below the base of where that loop is at. And I'm gonna take my fingers and push that head pin to a 90 degree angle exactly where it was on those pliers. And you'll wanna go ahead and thread the same beads here on the next head pin. So again, I've got the fuchsia, the two millimeter round, the rose, <clears throat> two millimeter round, the vintage rose, the two millimeter round, and the crystal AB. Now for this head pin, I'm gonna actually take my first head pin, I'm gonna line them up side by side, equal, and I'm going to grab right next to where the other bend is, 
and bend that wire straight out to a 90 degree angle so that when you hold it they should be as close as length as possible. Now still holding both of those head pins, I'm going to take my cutters and I'm going to trim both wires at the same time. I'm going to make a plain loop on the head pin. And you're going to do the same thing on the other head pin. And it's kind of hard for me to do this on video because I've got a video camera right in front of me. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> okay. So I have my loops. They're a little off because, I, again, I've got a video camera sitting between me and this beadwork. So I'm going to straighten those up, and now all you have to do is use your ear wires, open up the ear wire. On these particular ear wires, the way that they are, I'm going to thread my component on first, and I'm going to thread it on to where I'm looking at the hollow side, because there's a hollow side and a rounded side. Then. Thread on your head pin and then close the loop. And those lay almost exactly where I wanted them to. Now, one thing I would suggest is go ahead and grab the very top here where your loop is at and go ahead and just kind of press those together a little bit so that way you get a nice like this head pin is up against your binding and your component. And you'll do that the same one for your other earring and then you'll just have a very simple pair of earrings. So I hope you guys enjoyed learning how to use these new 47 millimeter open teardrop components. Again, they're simple and super easy to make. Um, we do have the kits available on our website for the pink and the blue gradients that you just seen here in the video um, and we also have just the um, the teardrop components again those are available on our website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com um, and just because I know people always ask um, the ring I had on in the video today is one of our bead embroidery videos um, so you can go back to our YouTube channel click on videos and find our bead embroidery and then um, the nail polish I have on today is called Irresistible by Madam Glam and you can find it at madamglam.com. So I hope you guys have a wonderful day and uh, happy February. Mm -hmm.